Well, our bank used to be a, a thriving village when the distillery was up and running and its full capacity. It was a thriving village. They had a shop, they had a post office, they had everything. And the puffers came in, took whiskey away, coal and everything used to come in back and forth. So it was very, very lively. And when the distillery closed, the whole life went out of the whole community. It was just devastating. It's a job that men have done all their life, really, and they weren't maybe skilled in anything else. So people had to move away. The, the whole village just sort of died. There was a kind of depression on the place for a long time, you know. It's just a wee village, and any job losses affects the economy, really. Because of conditions, I, I can only assume the distillery was closed in 1996 and put up for sale before it was bought by Glenmorne JPLC in February of 1997. And since then, obviously, um, we've invested, as I say, a lot, of, a lot of money, a lot of capital, and a lot of investment in the people as well, as we say. Well, we couldn't really believe it till it did happen, you know, sort of. But then when we saw work, you know, progressing, it was really lovely. In an industry now where things are, are disappointingly going so much the other way, uh, distilleries are closing down, it's very, it's very rare for a distiller to be brought back from the dead. The distillery itself has definitely changed. It has gone from being second fiddle to another major distiller, which is where our bag ought to be because it is such a unique gram. A lot of distilleries now are like factories. It's all stainless steel, it's all just the way they want it for the tourists, but our bag is just very, very traditional. They've tried to keep to the original and not try to, you know, make it something really snappy and I take. Here at Arbeg, we have certain unique character that we, we want, certainly want to, to keep and promote. To walk through the old malt storage area, for example, to see the, the Bobby Mill in operation, to see the wooden washbacks, to see the majestic stills in the still house. We want it to be a complete and refreshing tour for any visitor that comes here. That lovely feeling has come back. You know, really, really quite nice. I um, salute our beg for coming back to Isla and uh, helping in our regeneration. Oh, it's, it's brought a whole new lease of life to the whole this, this whole end of the island, with the amount of people that are working in the distillery and in the visitor centre. It's a huge boost to the whole island. I don't think anyone really thought it would have turned out like this. It's beyond what they imagined it would be like. It 
it's just a joy to everyone who loves Ardbeg and who loves Isla to come up and see the lovely new um, visitor centre you have and the lovely lunches you can get in Ardbeg. It's also helping in a tourist uh, industry in that part of the island. We've had people from Latvia, Israel, Bosnia, the most bizarre, out-of-the-way places. People making pilgrimages from, from all over the world to come and, and visit their favourite distillery to feel the atmosphere of Ardbeg. People who are visiting are, are kind of growing with the distillery, growing with Ardbeg. We were very, very fortunate to actually win Distillery of the Year in 1998, with Glamorangie Distillery having uh, won it in 1997, so company-wide it was great. It was a really good motivator. I think Isla is so much different from, from the mainland, mainly because the, the peating levels uh, are, are much more substantial than the mainland. It's really only when you come to Isla that you start tasting whiskies of this character. And because of that, that uh, holds a, a special place for, for people to come and visit Isla because the whisky is so different. The sheer strength and the sheer hit, you know when you've had an Ardbeg. I have now been converted to Ardbeg big time. The 17-year-old has, has really captured the imagination and the launch of the 10-year-old is going to be paramount. We're dealing with a quality product here. Um, I'm positive enough to, to think that um, we will we all succeed. It would be difficult to fail. It's been a tremendous transformation, and our bank has gone from strength to strength. We have a feeling the distilleries believe in us as we believe in, in the distilleries. It's got that lovely alive feeling, you know, it's got a purpose, which is nice, it's lovely. Well, we're looking at Ardbeg long term and Glamorangie have been, um, are, are heavily behind Ardbeg, very heavily behind Ardbeg. Well, Ardbeg is a malt whisky with extreme depth, it's exceptionally well balanced. Ardbeg is a, a whisky with smoke, it has fruit, it is sweet, it has floral notes. Really, Ardbeg is a malt with, of exceptional quality. It is the most heavily peated malt in Scotland, and it is an Isla malt, and it is absolutely unique, and it is the best whisky in the world. Cheers. Slangeva. Thank <laughs> you.